Hey, you must be wondering where I am. You must be wondering where I've been for the past year and a bit. Well, we lost the venue, and I couldn't find a space for an interview, so I kind of sat at home trying to figure things out. So now I've just decided to just do it wherever I can. So right now we're just doing it at my house. Um, the next interview is with me and my friends, Nebulae Complex, and my other friend, Shane, a.k.a. Twitch, the original Twitch, who's been doing music for a long time. Uh, yes, we are talking about the show that's coming up on July 6th, and it's called Birthday and Release, and we were just talking about our band stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Sorry for the long break, but I am back for a bit. Hello, everybody. Um, so stupid. I'm so, so, so unprofessional. But if anyone wants to use this. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is very low, so it goes really weird. Um, hi, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm just doing my series again of interviews. This time I don't have a destination, so we're just doing it at my house. <laughs> and uh, we have a show coming up. So it's going to be me, JHNN, uh, Nebulae Complex, which is over here. And then we got Shane, or Twitch, the original Twitch. The, original the one that was doing it since 1999, Twitch. The one that should have sued Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was going to ask Shane especially, what was it like doing industrial... Well, actually, first of all, tell, you, tell me like your music history. Oh, God, that is such a long story. Well, tell, tell like what you got into. Like, what was the first thing that you got into? Like, as far as music? Yeah. Uh, musically what kind of started the whole uh like getting into alternative stuff was I was big into white zombie and then eventually that led me finding nine inch nails and then that just kind of triggered yeah triggered the the rest of it and going deeper into industrial and goth music and stuff like that i don't know if that's what you're asking but oh that's that's exactly what i was asking um, when did you, I'll, I'll do this one and I'll ask, um, uh, Nebulae Complex the same question, but when did you first start playing music? So, uh, first, I was first in a band in Saskatoon called Adam Hates You. We started a band that was in 96 or 97 and unfortunately nothing really came of it. I, I was trying to always get those guys to play live and they would never really do anything. So... Uh, so after a period of time, I got tired of trying to convince them to play live. And, uh, then I moved here, dissolved the band, moved here. And then in 98, I started writing the first Twitch album. And then, it, then in, uh, in, interestingly enough, the first album, uh, self-titled Twitch album was actually released on just before my birthday. So, Ooh, so yeah, uh, so Twitch, this year, Twitch is 24 next year we turn 25 and yeah and then that was that's kind of it so it's a pure anniversary if no one knows it's the the show is called birthday and uh release so all three of us have releases that are coming out at the same time relatively the same time because yours is july 20th um i'm gonna ask you the same questions when did you start music and tell people well I mean, you're not originally from Calgary. I guess I didn't know you weren't from originally yeah, from Calgary for some reason I thought I was. But um, you're not ori uh, originally from Calgary. So what was your, like, what was the, Catalyst. I would say, what was the, what was the gateway to industrial? Where you were originally from? And tell people where you were originally from. I'm originally from Russia, from uh, the city of Yakutsk, all the way out in the middle of nowhere in eastern Siberia. And uh, that's where I was born and grew up. And I moved to Calgary at the age of 17 after finishing high school. So uh, I have gotten into industrial music a couple of years prior to moving here. 
And some of the catalysts and some of the gateways for me definitely were, um, first of all, it's the fact that I was already a punk and metalhead at that time. I got into that at the age of 13, started playing bass, got into a whole bunch of Western and Russian punk bands of the era. Um, early 2000s, early early to mid 2000s, you know, all the pop punk and all the old school metal, all the old school hard and heavy was a big maiden head for a while, still am. So, but the gateway to industrial was actually in 2005, uh, Nine Inch Nails have become active again and released with teeth. And I was always looking for uh, things that are a little bit more left field in terms of sound and things that are a little bit more interesting, a little bit more unusual, a little bit more experimental. And one of them was, like I said, uh, Nine Inch Nails releasing with teeth and getting some more press in 2005 again. At around the same time, uh, growing up, I was also a PC gamer. I played uh, the video game American Maggie's Alice. And the soundtrack for that game was done by Chris Renner from Nine Inch Nails. And it was quite atmospheric and I found it intriguing. Um, it was basically dark and atmospheric lullaby type electronic music. Very much interesting sound design kind of a thing. So that compounded with uh, Nine Inch Nails, the new release, and me discovering a whole bunch of music videos on underground then active Russian music channel Music Box led me to uh, discover industrial music and I got into it via, like I already said, Nine Inch Nails, KMFDM, Oomph. I saw Oomph Gekreuzek from 1999. Uh, I saw that music video uh, late night on that Music Box channel. So that was kind of an int interesting experience. And yeah, like, like I already said, I got into KMFDM. I managed to get into Einstürz and Neubauten also pretty early on. Um, lots of other industrial rock. Uh, and the first electro-industrial release for me was actually Stromkern Reminders. And also Frontline Assembly releasing Artificial Soldier. And all that combined in mid-2000s has completely cemented my lifelong interest in this music and sound. Those are some of the highlights I remember. There were many more, like I was getting into Womp Scout at a time and was hunting. Uh, f then, uh, rare to find 242 tracks also, but those are some of the highlights that I remember. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was so in-depth. I loved it. <laughs> do, you want any do you want to add anything to that? Or to what uh, you well, got, like... Like, for me, Nine Inch Nails was kind of the catalyst in getting into industrial, like uh like it, yes white zombie was a part of it but it was kind of like at the time i was hanging out with a bunch of goths and there was some goths that were super supportive and they were like i was when i was starting to get into like nine inch nails and stuff uh in particular pretty hate machine uh they you know would ask questions and they would always answer and stuff like that so it was very it was a very supportive environment uh yeah it, it, it just kind of went deeper and deeper and deeper after that. Like, it was just like, okay, Nine Inch Nails. Okay, there's Ministry. Okay. Uh, the I was, uh, long story short, I was, I wanted to purchase the Nine Inch Nails Downward Spiral album, and I accidentally purchased Further Down the Spiral, which is the remix version of the Downward Spiral, but I was like, you know what? I, I fucking love this band. And it just, it just kind of, it just kind of like, went deeper and deeper and deeper after that and it you know it, i'm still looking for new industrial music and stuff like that these days and yeah i, I don't know if i can really add anything else there so <laughs> no 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 that was perfect that was perfect um i have to ask slavo a question because i just remembered because i asked you this yeah. um when you started producing but i quickly want to say well for me, because I have to interview myself. Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm interviewing <laughs> myself. I am John. <laughs> um, I actually had a long path because I I was a pop junkie. I was really into pop music. And, like, literally my first album was <laughs> S Club 7. Oh, my God. Well, this, that was, like, I was so young. So I didn't really get the exposure to industrial the way everyone got the exposure to it 
um my sister used to listen to a lot of Depeche Mode um so Depeche Mode was like the tip of the iceberg it was like sick this is a sweet thing and then like everything I liked happened to be in the gothy realm so I wasn't clicking until I'm not even joking it wasn't clicking till probably like late 2010s yeah. that I was more into the like more of the gothy industrial sound like even the stuff that i was making for my s i have an album called machine funk um i was making it and i was like i just want to make something experimental and everyone was like you know this sounds industrial right <laughs> yeah well that that kind of triggered the whole thing oh also i'm just i'm the rarest calgary born person that you'll ever meet <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was oh, born in Calgary, so no, nope, nope. I was born here. I've been here my entire life. Um, but like I said, um, it uh, it was a it was from that, and then I got really tired, and I got into trance, really heavily into trance, like super heavy into trance music, and and then I just were you a club kid? Were you a club kid? Um. At the time, I could have been, but I didn't know there was all ages shows. Oh, how, 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 do you mind if I ask? Uh, I w when I got into it, I was like seven. Oh, crazy! Nice. Yeah, that's crazy. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, like my brother used to like I had a brother that used to go to clubs and like they he come home with these like dance CDs. Yeah. Like I had Dance Mix ninety five, which was like my first like exposure to dance music, and I really liked it. But I found out that that was like Euro dance. Oh. And then, like, trance kind of came around 1997. Yeah. And I was just blown away by the way it sounded. Like, it felt like it was, like, spiritual. But then, yeah. in, like, 2001, 2002, it got kind of boring to me. Yeah. And I was looking for something similar to that. So I just, like, went into, like, pop punk. And I went into, like, other genres because I was like, this is boring, whatever. I went to, like, rap. But rap kind of started to bore me because I kept talking about the same things over and over again. Yeah. It was, like, it was just, like, this thing where it was, like, they kept talking about yeah. what they were getting into. And then, like, I got into, I guess it was called dance punk at the time. And then that led me to electro. Yeah. And all the electro songs I like sounded industrial. <laughs> so I didn't like it was literally that long process of industrial. And then I got more into dark wave. So I am going to play a lot, a little bit more dark, like dark wavy stuff. But I do have the electro. What are you doing out there? It's a cat. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I got into industrial, and then I kind of been stuck on dark wave and industrial as of late and yeah. post punk. Yeah. But uh, I'm a little I I overdid post punk last year, yeah. <laughs> which is funny because I made a post punk album, but then I was just like, I'm tired of this. <laughs> Out of all honesty, sometimes people do get tired of doing si yeah. the same thing. Yeah. For me, like I don't, I don't, I don't get tired of doing what I do. Like I, I love industrial metal and hip hop, and I, that's just what I do. And it's just, you know, I, I love doing it, and I, I'm very passionate about it. And I, I always find it, I, I get energy from doing it. And but that everyone's different, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it, some people, some people who explore a lot of different stuff and they they're, they're they're trying to find their voice and maybe they don't find their voice or maybe maybe they do and they go back to something that they're like you know what i really connected with this or sometimes people are just they're kind of all over the place and that that's that's fine so yeah that like that's actually my energy was more i was like all over the place and yeah. i couldn't really figure out like the most at home i felt i'm not even gonna lie is the last five years doing like dark wave yeah. and industrial because yeah. i always felt because i was in more of the house and like disco scene and i was like i always felt like i had to like prove something to them yeah. and in this scene it's just like we're all like good fans of music yeah. Yeah. and that's what i like i didn't i didn't like going to those shows and being like i have to show you that i can dj and i have yeah. to show you that i can do this like i've seen 
the coolest thing about like well i would say that just like the goth scene in general is seeing people perform with what they have yeah totally like like i've seen people just perform with an ipod jack oh, totally and yeah. just like kill and yeah, I will be honest. This at least the scene in here in Calgary, it's very much like a family. Like everyone kind of knows each other, mm -hmm. and you know, like at least for me, like I I'm always trying to support the bands and stuff. Like, you know, and I I think that is generally the the case for everyone else is that they want to support each other. And I think, out of all honesty, you can't not to like I I think you know. Yeah, I lost my point there. <laughs> uh. I, th I think people get that you need to support. And I think uh, everyone kind of gets that, like, because it is not a huge scene here, but I think everyone kind of gets that we have to support each other. And, you know. Yeah, no, like, that's just, it's the only way. It's such a, it's such a small community of people who make industrial here so that's why i've always tried to like reach out to those people first before i even do anything because like and it's nice that people are nice about it it's it's hard to do stuff when they're not nice about it and uh, that's what i was finding like when i was making house music it was like so hard for me to like yeah. just get them to play one of my songs or listen to my music in general because they were going to festivals and all they wanted to play was stuff at festivals and i was like you know we have good house music here but you guys don't want to play it unless yeah. you like get booked at like a festival but i really need to get to slava because i i need to know um when did you start producing music i started producing my own music in 2007 actually um it's a very very long history <laughs> However, I like I said already, I started uh, playing bass uh, growing up as like a punk and metal kid. Uh, I didn't really go anywhere. I played in various bands, both back in Eastern Siberia in Russia and when I moved to Calgary. So in 2007, um, mostly and partially uh, sort of inspired by the experience of the work that was done on Pretty Hate Machine yeah. and the idea of just hammering out uh, all the parts with some janky electronics or DAW and then trying to find a band and presented it more of a live format started sounding more and more intriguing to me. I was messing around with the first DAW on a very modest laptop around that time. Um, and most of the late 2000 I spent, um, it was quite a busy time for me because I was also in the university so I was trying to do everything and mm -hmm. get established in a new country and go to university and try to make some money and you know make make the living and at the same time produce music and play in bands and I found myself caught between the metal side of myself and the more electronic side and throughout late 2000s uh, I definitely mostly attended to the metal side uh, I played in metal and punk I played in a local semi well-known band called the reckless heroes that are unfortunately no longer active but that was my first long long-term band experience in Canada and in, er in early 2010s I started producing and more seriously and invested in some gear and stuff as well were you not with Red Cane as well I was in Red Cane yeah in uh, in 2011 I joined uh, to play bass and some noise type electronics however our paths diverged eventually because what I was interested in providing and doing and how I was interested in presenting it and what the band leader was looking were slightly different things and we ended up parting f we ended up parting ways uh, however on a good note we're still fantastic friends and i support everything that mr jack does and all his ventures and projects and everything so yeah so i've been producing since 2007 on and off and more seriously since i would say 2013 the nebula nebula complex i started just as an experimental left field random outfit outlet so Anything that wouldn't work with the bands that I was working with at that time uh, would just end up as a Nebula Complex little side project type tinkering, mostly IDM or experimental or atmospheric or really noisy or really out there stuff. And eventually I just decided to present all my solo work under this moniker. Nice. That's so sick. That's such a... So long. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was going to say, um, uh, let's talk about each sound that you were going for for each album so you had fuck your pop yeah fuck your pop 
that's yours yeah. and you got like i'm so shocked you had like i thought you were just gonna have like eight songs there's like 16 yeah, 17, 17 songs on it yeah like <laughs> yeah. and you said you did that on the week of uh yeah so it was actually written in a period of like a couple of months but the majority of it was written i think between july 22nd and august 7th or something so like yeah well i will be honest uh these days i work very quickly so it's like when i sit down to write something it's like i'll do it in a very like i'll do it in a chunk and uh if it wasn't for uh when uh during covid when we had those lockdowns i had written an album called darkness rise and i i was like okay i'm gonna set myself a challenge and you know see how f i, I want to write an album within a month's time and i actually ended up writing it in a I think one and a half or two weeks so for me being that i i've done that it's i've gotten to the point where it's like okay i can i can crank something out quite quickly and uh i don't need a lot of time to make the executive decisions it's just like okay this works i'm not gonna fuck around with this too much and n not that i'm rushing anything like i don't rush anything it's just yeah Anyway, th I, I know I, I digress there. I know we're trying to talk about the sound and stuff like that. Oh, like, actually, well, we can talk about that also with all three of us. But I'm going to get into the sound first before I get into that. But, um, yeah, like, what was the sound that you were going for for this album specifically? I need, I, I can't even pronounce your album. <laughs> I need you to say the album, but... For you, fuck your pop is your album. Um, I just uh need to uh know like what sound were you going for for this one? There's a there's a story. I know the story, yeah, but I want so, people to know it. So I was, I was actually, uh, what I was doing was I was listening to pop music and it was really pissing me off. And the thing, actually, the catalyst for it was, I saw a video by Big Time Rush. And it was the video for the song. What was the song called? I can't remember what the song called, but the the intro was fucking amazing. But then when they got into the rest of the song, it started to piss me off. So I was like, well, I and in general, I don't really like pop music. Like there's some stuff that I do like, but uh, most in most cases, I find it very shallow and I find it very uh there's not a lot of thought put into it, and I find that the people that, not saying everyone, but I'm, uh, the people that I've dealt with that are into pop music, they tend to be shallow as well. And I, and basically what I wanted to do with the album was take pop elements, like I was sampling, I, I'm not going to tell you what the samples are, but I was taking pop elements from radio and stuff like that and i was like distorting them and fucking them up and there's there's elements of pop in there but basically i was just taking those elements and fucking them up and that's that's kind of what the the album is and like i, I the the very first song on the album fuck your pop uh i wanted i wanted to kind of lead people in with this like deception and it was kind of like uh y there's this like cl clean fucking synth line there or uh, sort of synth line and and then of course it gets all fucked up and noisy and all that shit and that's that's kind of what it was so no, that's a sweet concept i love that concept and uh, yeah to add on that i w we were talking earlier we were talking about how pop was just kind of this was like on one of those posts that you post on your group calgary industrial yeah. um uh, it was like you just seeing the patterns of pop and people weren't experimenting anymore and there was a ch pla place about like people where they used to experiment in pop music. Yeah. Well, that that's the thing. Like you, you look at the modern pop artists and some of them do write their own stuff, but a lot of it is like written by somebody else. And it's like, I, I get that certain artists are like, you know, they have somebody else write because they can't do it themselves. But at the same time, I find once again getting into the shallowness of it you you get these songwriters that are really shallow and their their messaging is really shallow then you get these pop artists that sing it or, or put music to it and i just it it just seems like a very sh shallow thing and i don't i don't see pop music I, I find pop music a lot of it is the same like it's like uh like 
you you can literally listen to anything that's on the radio you can listen to in, in pop music even rock music for that matter unfortunately rock music is like this as well where you, you listen to one thing and it's kind of like you've heard the the rest of it and it's like and unfor unfortunately there is a reason for that like i know the reason why is because it, they usually have the same producers it's usually the same two or three three three-ish producers that are producing all the major pop music right now and it's you know that's why everything sounds the same and it's just it, it it just gets boring and it's just like why why the fuck am i listening to this you know i think also um after napster people were getting like the record companies got really scared of taking risks because yeah. like in the 90s that's when that was the last time you heard people taking risk in pop music it was really cool it was really interesting time that was the last interesting time but the word the the thing was is that the people who were taking risks um in the 90s were getting screwed over by these record companies yeah. like it was like a 20 80 split yeah well whatever, whatever the split was it yeah, yeah it's, uh yeah i'm not sure what i'm gonna say never mind <laughs> <laughs> all, I gotta, all, all i wanted to say was um with that it's like it's it was um it made the uh, industry saturated so then they started looking for a formula yeah, and that, that's the thing too. Like, you get these, you get these record labels that are like, "Well, this works. So we want to do more of this stuff. So we're gonna get this producer for you to produce this music that sounds like everyone else, so we can make more money at, off you and all that kind of shit." So, yeah. yeah, like that. That was, that was a big problem. I want to get more into that, but I know I can't. I need to know what your album is about, and please say the name for us, because I'm so bad. I like tried to read it, and like I can't say it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So the album or the EP uh, is the Nebula Complex release called Briozoan Operator. Uh, Briozoa are tiny, various, small, uh, aquatic, deep, usually deep sea life forms. And I just found that aesthetically interesting. And this is definitely the most uh, organic sounding release that uh, I have worked on thus far. Um, I am still embracing lots of other sensibilities I had before, like all the, you know, more typical industrial elements and the harshness and the, some degree of transgressiveness. But I decided to make it more interesting by changing a lot of elements up because by the late 2010s and by the time pandemic hit, uh, I felt like that I was in a little bit of a formulaic headspace when it uh, came to production of music. I worked quite a bit um, on two or three projects at a time. The Nebula Complex was my sort of side outlet for all the experimental stuff. I was also involved in a post-punk scene in the Detached Objectives, post-punk Dark Wave Act, and my main electro-industrial outfit, Technotron. Uh, it was a three-piece. Two members eventually located to Vancouver, but we continued uh, working remotely. By late 2010s, it felt like I was in a place where all the music that I was trying to involve myself in or was making was formulaic in a sense that I would go through the same process to try and write something and then present it live. That is, open the door, start drawing some, start drawing in some drums, start drawing in some melodic elements, and then start copy-pasting it into a structure that I found for myself to be quite repetitive. So I decided to take a step back and uh, approach music making from a completely different from much more left field standpoint uh, for some tracks I just assembled them as for this EP I assembled them as complete tapestry of noises that I started in different DAW projects doing sound design for the sake of sound design I got very heavily into uh, rediscovering and rediscovering more older music from 80s and 90s and seeing uh, and also seeing and hearing what is happening in modern underground music I rediscovered a lot of works by Aphex Twin, Autecre, got into Boards of Canada again, uh, just tried to get into uh, more left field electronics, um, various, um, various, various experimental acts. Uh, Future Sound of London, Dead Cities is the album I had on repeat while working on this EP. Uh, earlier, uh, Psyche recordings were good because I find that to be essentially excellent raw 80s almost proto synth pop mm -hmm. um first two or three releases by skinny puppy 
particularly more textural b-sides off of Remission and Bytes era were inspiring me. And with all that in mind, from about uh, 2021 until right now, I was working on and off on new material. Again, changing approach. Some songs were structural tapestries assembled from different sound design elements. Uh, for some songs, I said, I just want to work in the DAW, on the go in coffee shops yeah. and see how that goes. Shane and I spent a lot of time in these sessions and a lot came out of them. Uh, for some, I decided to dust off the synths that I haven't used in a while and discover and rediscover and use them in interesting and unexpected ways. Uh, for some, I decided to just do uh, a fairly typical uh, staple pop or rock song structure, but uh, introduce uh, introduce less conventional elements to it. For example, using chorus structure only once as sort of a song climax and then letting the song come down in the second half. Stuff like that. So I guess to sum things up, um, it's just Briozone Operator EP is a combination of last almost three years of work and work that I tried to do consciously differently and embrace simplicity, embrace a sometimes simpler process, letting go of certain things such as perceived perfection on mixing or vocal recording, however hard it has been. But I felt like it has improved things a lot because I am quite happy with the results and I look forward to presenting it live and seeing what comes next. So yeah, that's that. What about you, John? Now you tell us about your upcoming release and upcoming album or EP work that you've got going on. Um, so I actually want to go back a little bit because you went back too. Uh, I wanted to go back to like my first process. I was into electro when I first started producing music uh, because I like the way the electro had like punk elements to it. It was called electro and then it became like, I forgot what it was called. Like it was electro that out of nowhere it was like EDM. They just randomly decided to call it EDM. And I was like, but electronic dance music is like a whole thing. It's like house, yeah, house techno and all that. And then they just randomly decided to call it that. Yeah. So I was into that around that time. Um, my name comes from Mastercraft from like 2006 because it was like the bands that I was really, really into electronically were like Daft Punk and Mastercraft and like a lot of French french bands i was so obsessed with the french house scene because the way that their mixing was was like it was so different from like house music that you would hear in like chicago because like the chicago house was more like linear and like it just had a four to four on the floor the french house had like disco elements in it but also at the same time the mixing was like so broad it was like huge it sounded big and i was like how do i make this sound so big and clean and like nice at, but at the same time like enjoyable and like addicting like, it was like weird and they would like sample one thing and it would just be like this really addictive sample so electro was feeding me at the time i got really tired of electro around 2012 and went into house music um and actually weirdly enough my the disco that i used to make in like 2008 it sounded like deep house and then the deep house i used to make sounded industrial <laughs> so i kind of naturally moved in that direction of industrial but um yeah like i was saying uh got tired of house music because I, I was seeing, I was recognizing four on the floor. It was getting really hard for me to connect with people because most of them just wanted to play shows and go to festivals. I didn't have money to go to festivals and I wanted to be around people who were just into m music, like actual, yeah. the grassroots of music. I was seeing the metal scenes and I just, from my friend sh asked me to go to hang the DJ once. And after that, I'm, saw people like i don't know there was something that hit when i went that one day because yeah. after that i was like fuck house music <laughs> i am not even joking i was like why am i making house music this is <laughs> this is amazing watching these people dance to like just whatever and like chris wasn't even like trying to beat match he was just like because like that was the thing with 
with um the house crowds they were so anal about beat magic so i know how to do it yeah. i just don't care anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> out of all honesty, I don't think it matters anymore. It's like we're there to have a good time, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah, like like that's what that's what I went from that place. But the, I just wanted to be around a crowd that was like doing that. And then like I started watching Terminus videos. I couldn't go because I was a workaholic at the time, and I just didn't want to miss work. I was a workaholic, and I would just I'll go to hang the DJ, and I'll just spend money at hang the DJ, and I'll go to work spend money on hanging the dj go to work and that was it that was all i did and then i saw the videos at terminus and it was just this person on a mic just just commanding the crowd yeah. and i was like i want to fucking perform like that yeah. i don't want to perform with a controller and like just you know play the same songs for people and yeah. all that stuff i want to like command people and i saw that and then Obviously, um, 2016 to 2020 was my process for my stereotype album. Then 2020 happened. <laughs> so I had to release an album during the pandemic, and that was actually one of my favorite albums that I've made. And I feel like I've kind of undersold it oh, really? yeah. because of just during the pandemic. But, like, it's... Well, it's hard then, right? It's like, how the fuck do you promote something properly when you can't be out in physical spaces and stuff like that? Right. Although there is yeah. Twitch, there is yeah. Twitch, there is there is now. other other avenues. But at the personally, I think it's not the same as being in person, and you don't get that like connection there. It's it's all through the screen, and yeah. Yeah, like I I I um that was my issue is that I couldn't connect with people here, and I still. I I don't sound weird, but I am. I'm still having a little hard time. I, I connect more with people outside yeah. in the Twitch world yes. than I do with people here. And that that's a problem, but also it's like I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm fine. Like like yeah. I'm happy that my album found a home in Twitch universe, which I wasn't expecting. I um I'm really happy about that. But the next album I was going to do a post punk album. Actually, secretly, I was going to do a Future Pop album. I couldn't master the sound yet. There was something that was missing, and I just, I wanted to figure out, I wanted to get something out, like, this year. Is this not connected? Uh-oh. Um, can you plug this in? That is, just unplug that one, um, that one socket right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's my laptop connection. I thought I was like, "Oh my god, it's about to run out." <laughs> yeah, take off the vacuum. I was vacuuming earlier. Oopsies. But uh, um thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry about that. But um yeah, like uh I this is this was the process in after uh cuz I used to work at Cafe Clutch after that closed down. I wanted to do post punk because I was like angry, yeah. <laughs> like really mad. Like I was just fed up with trying so hard to, like, you know, work. You work these nine to five jobs, and then it gets closed down because, like, you know, people are trying to price you out. And I was just like really annoyed at the situation of losing so many venues, um, and I kept hearing "Eat the Rich." Every single person was telling me, eat the rich. I'm like, why are people saying that so much? Like, we're, is this a phrase that, like, always existed? I was, like, so confused because, like, I didn't hear this phrase. And I didn't know Aerosmith had a song in, like, 1993 yeah. um, for eat the rich, which is really ironic. Like, this is, yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I didn't know. And I was like, well, this is really ironic because... I wanted to listen to sounds that were like kind of from 1993, but also I was really inspired by Terminus, oh, yeah. really inspired by Terminus. Yeah. So um, I was like, it was like that dark wave sound, but I didn't want to sound like that dark wave sound. So I was really having a hard time trying to figure out what to do. So I've gotten it simplified, and it went dark wave, not by choice, but it just was the natural progression 
of my last album. It sounded naturally better to go dark wave. Yeah. Um, there's still like industrial elements. Uh, I'm like probably gonna play more stereotype stuff at the show just because there's more of that, <laughs> and that is more industrial than this album, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, like I, I kept hearing "Eat the Rich," and I was fed up with a lot of things, and that's the energy of the album. I know you guys haven't heard it yet, but because I had, like literally finished this last song like Saturday. Because <laughs> I, I work, I used to work fast, but I was going through something. I was really fed up. I was trying to look for work. I couldn't find any work. Um, I was just, the only thing I could do was stream on Twitch. And it's not that I don't like that. It was just, it felt like I, I don't want to rely on people who come to my Twitch stream to like, you know, listen to me play music. Yeah. Um, and I have a really tough issue begging people for money yeah. and like that's what you're supposed to do on twitch is like if you want me to if you want to support me you do all that stuff and i was just getting really drained and then like yeah. last year and me and you all of us were trying to find shows last year yeah. or this year yeah. and it was getting hard and then there was getting like politics where people were like i'm not going to this venue yeah. until um yeah, until I'm not going to your show until this happens. And I get it. And I'm not trying to like this. But like that was hard because I was like, I can barely get people to come to any of my shows anyway. <laughs> so that's the energy of the whole album. Like it's literally like I'm just fed up and I don't know what to do anymore. So everyone's solution was eat the rich. So I'm at that point now. <laughs> yeah, like. I just I, I just didn't know where to go, but um if I could describe it, uh it's um there's some songs that are inspired by like I guess it's called E B S M. Oh oh yeah. Yeah, I'm like sure Morris Black. Or it is. Yeah, it's like Morris Black and like it sounds kinda like just oh, yeah, type of so. but yeah. That that there was like this resurgence during the pandemic of that type of stuff, like Sierra and I, Morris Black was doing a little bit of it. Um, Matt Black, I think, was doing some of it too, Matt but Black his is more of like, huh? Matt Black and Matt Hart? No, Matt Hart does more industrial. I think he does more electro industrial. He's one of my friends too. Yeah. But Matt Black is, um, he, he does like, he, it sounds like Depeche Mode if Depeche Mode went like full industrial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's how i described matt black and he's a he just came out in like 2020 and i was hearing a lot of his stuff and i was really inspired by it and i got more into obviously around 2017 i just i had a high standard for boy harsher um i really loved boy harsher sound because it was like it felt like they rejuvenated that 80s sound without yeah. sounding like the 80s yeah. it felt like they were taking modern elements and i didn't know what they were making at the time and that's actually where stereotype kind of came from so i mean boy harsher used to be that that big thing for my last album but this album i was just like looking for something that was like different so Zanius is one of the big ones oh, I that love Zanius. Zanius yeah, changed my similar. life i can't remember what the project was called Oh, fuck. I remember. It was like this weird, like, electronic... Was it like Sphincter? No. Uh, oh, the project. Is it Linea Spera? Linea yeah, Spera? yeah, yeah Linea Spera or... Uh, Kelowar. Kelowar. Kelowar, Kelowar. yeah. Kelowar, Kelowar is amazing. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, 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 I love yeah. that stuff. I like that one, too. Yeah, she has three projects, because she had Linea, um, Linea Spera, and she has Kelowar, and then she has... Um, does she have Haunte? Or is that someone else? No. Someone told me that she had haunted, but um, oh. yeah. <laughs> that the Zanius's album in twenty twenty one was like just such a next level experience for me. Yeah. That just changed my life. I just was like, all right, I'm done with boy. <laughs> I'm not done with boy harsher, but like I love boy harsher, and I'll, they'll always be a part of my heart, just because like they were that sound that I really wanted to do with my last album.
but with this album Zanius was like ooh top tier like top tier like holy crap what is this and yes i was listening to a lot of post punk um i have some of the post punk songs and actually they're not bad i just don't think it matches the energy of the album yeah and i wanted songs that i could play live and actually dance to oh, yeah. so these ones are the ones that i can actually dance to and the other ones i'm like putting on another album until I get it right and feel like I want to dance to it. But right now I'm like, eh, I don't know. I I don't know. Um so I guess you your album process really fast. Yeah. So what's your album process like? It's tough to say uh I don't have a uh, a process that is too well defined and I think that's a good thing because I try to approach almost every track slightly differently. Uh, for this upcoming EP, but if I were to think of some commonalities, I would say that um, some of the aspects are definitely starting with left field sound design elements sometimes for some songs uh, without the end song in mind, just so I don't get caught in a typical, you know, eight bar loop or like typical DAW arrangement. Uh, changing environment helps to uh, produce to work on the album uh, working on the go working out and about uh, limiting yourself for certain periods of time with certain gear or process for example some songs I wrote entirely in the box whereas other songs I wrote with uh, heavily with hardware in mind Changing up your setups and having the ability to change up your setups is important to me because of my self-diagnosed DDD brain you have to switch things up you have to have a pedal arrangement you're getting something out of it eventually you got some recording takes it's subject to diminishing returns okay let's bust this down let's bring in a different synth that I have and let's start jamming with that in mind mm -hmm. so lots of elusive lots of on-the-go elements um, lots of elements of uh, gluing things together, elements of tapestry and collage are some of the themes that help me. The other blocker, the other historical sort of almost blocker I have is the way I would work before is I would do and make all the instrumental production and now it's ready and on the big day we record vocals and at least in my head that was perceived as a significant milestone and I would be focused on too many things trying to make that perfect and it wouldn't always go the way I want it to go so I decided to counter that blocker by doing things differently entirely so for this album before I recorded final vocals for this EP I have set up a super basic vocal just the pre-built effects chain uh, played around with some effects on the fly and instead of using a proper condenser mic I just took a dynamic mic yelled into effects chain set up the levels hit record and when go pretending that it's almost a live show because I feel much more natural in vocal at least element when I'm presenting it as a live show and I ended up using a lot of those takes in my uh, final songs so that was another good discovery and a good process that helped me with that so I guess to sum it up lots of on the go elements lots of elusive elements that come back together a lot of it is changing your environment a lot of it is changing the medium you're working in so for example if I'm hitting diminished returns on the DAW or the synth-centric rigs entirely for the next music session, I would only take pen and paper notebook and not even take any of my electronic gear. Maybe just the phone to hear some random jams for inspiration and headphones and wander off to some coffee shop or some park, some place that has nice plants because I find that to be an inspiring environment some place that's some interesting place in inner city or downtown uh, even some pubs sometimes and I would just start working with pen and paper making song structures working on lyrics whatever it may be to decouple the art itself from the instruments and tools that you're using it because when I open the DAW sequencer I do appreciate all the capacity uh, and nearly unlimited uh, sound design and uh, and writing opportunity I have but at some point I find at least in my case you do end up putting yourself into you end up being 
not always reasonably constrained by your instruments or your tools and you just go oh i'm just gonna copy these four bars here and paste the four bars here paste the four bars here and all oh, the entire song is done it sounds kind of okay let's snap that all to automation grid and that is excellent to have but i find that i would get too comfortable with just using that so anytime i would feel something like that is coming i would just take pen and paper take a trip or a walk somewhere and start drawing song structures, ideas, or lyrics decoupled from DAW entirely, allowing me to focus on the process. So these are some of the themes and highlights that were definitely present during production of DCP. Wow. <laughs> what about you, John? Anything you can tell us about your process? Um, I need to perfect my process, because it's, it's, not, it's not where up to par. I use FL Studio like Twitch does. <laughs> um, uh, but you've been using it for a very long time. I I did get to I did that thing where you were trying to write a song every month type of thing. Yeah. Honestly, the last three years was the hardest for me to write songs because of the pandemic. I was so out of my element because I didn't have a, I w I'm used to having work. And I didn't have two jobs. So that just like discouraged me from doing anything. So I was freaking out. My the situation where I was at, like I was just not happy being at that house that I was at before. This house I'm totally happy with. So my environment wasn't that good. Um, and then like I don't know, work started to get more complicated, and I started getting invested into work. And then I realized I'm getting invested into work so much that I'm not even doing my own work. And um, but anyways. The process is usually, usually, um, I like to have a session where I'm like just playing around. Mm. Um, only because I feel like, first of all, I want to make sure that like I can produce music no matter where I am. That's yeah. the first main goal is like, I, if I have a song idea, um, I have FL Studio on my phone, and sometimes I have songs, ide song ideas that just come up to me, and I'm just like, really, right now? And then I just have to get it out. I'll, so I just have to, because I know I'm going to use it a, a while. So sometimes it's like, most of the songs are like a combination of like song ideas I've put together, or something that just got stuck in my head, and I'm like, you know what, fuck it. Just put it in the song. I don't really care. And sometimes... I would even write lyrics for another song and then I'd be like, eh, it doesn't sound good. And I'd have another song that sounds better and I'd just put the lyrics on that too. Oh, yeah. So it's, it, it really, like, it's, it's definitely all over the place. Um, right now, the reason why it's taking so long is mostly my problems with vocals. I am trying to perf not perfect the process of vocals. But I want to make sure it sounds like a combination of electronic, but also if I sing it with my voice, it won't sound too distorted. Or not distorted, but like it won't sound too electronic, and it will sound just as good like without electronics than it does with the electronic type of thing. So that's taking a while. Um, I've recently just like stumbled upon new voc like new ways of producing my vocals mm -hmm. and i just really liked the way it sounds now and i'm 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 excited about this because of just the way it sounds and i'm probably going to release it like the way i'm releasing it is i'm releasing it one song at a time mm -hmm. but the whole album is going to come out um probably in september i'm going to perform is this ether rich or is this something else this is ether rich okay. so yeah. like I'm releasing, I'm performing the three songs that are coming out for sure on the, on the day, yeah. but I'm releasing it like staggered because I'm just seeing that people aren't listening to songs as much as they used to. Like they don't, they either they digest it too much or I don't know. There's a, the music is coming out constantly too. So if I just have one song, um, yeah, that's that. That'll be cool. And like, I want to get better at playing live because that's where my biggest weakness is. I spent more time DJing than I did playing live, and I wanted to spend the same amount because I started producing and DJing at the same time. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm 
kind of making up for my lack of performing and I'm trying to like sit in my room and perform at the same time as producing my music at the so it's like it's kind of like a balancing act that I've had in the last like two or three years but for the most part the reason why it's taking a long time is honestly my mental health because I, I just I, I didn't have the workspace to do it now for some reason it's there like now I'm like sick you know what I'm just gonna finish it I'm fine it's at the final and shows coming up yeah. people don't like it I don't really care I'm really happy with it and I can perform it so that's yeah. usually what I look for in songs um, I actually want to go a little bit more into detail with you, and then we are going to drop our social medias because it's about to be an hour. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, like we'll drop the we'll just do a call to action, which is like when your when your release was released, where you can get all that stuff. But we'll do that right after this. I just want to know um your album process because I am really curious of like how did uh, you told me that you got so fast because of that practice yeah. but um what what do you look for in like a song that you considered finish when you're doing that so i i'm, I'm not when i write i don't I'll, I'll just start i don't really start with anything in particular sometimes it's the vocals sometimes it's the lyrics sometimes it's guitar sometimes it's drum sequences whatever it is uh but Sorry, what was your question? Sorry, I got this. Um, it's, it's just, I want to know, like, what, like, what is the, what would you think is a finished song yeah. since you write so fast? Yeah, so I, I'm not, I'm not one of those people that I don't believe in, I don't believe perfection is real. So for me, it's like when I'm writing a song and I, I'm going through it, I'm like, I kind of feel it out. And, and then when it's like, okay, I think this is fucking done. You know, I, I can't and I, I'm not getting more ideas and I feel like the song has communicated what I want it to. And it's it's, uh, 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 you know, moving and flowing the way I want it to. And it's like I'll, I'll, I'll be like, OK, I don't see myself putting anything on any other instrumentation or any vocals or any choral parts or anything like that. I think this is done and then that that's it and it's like I just feel it out and and a lot of the times I'm you know when I'm writing music like it's like okay this I do this 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 and that uh there, there's definitely there's definitely a like granted I don't really have a, a set thing I start with but there there is like because I've gotten so into the habit of writing uh, cause I, I, I have lots of music right now, mm -hmm. like tons, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm in such a habit. It's like, I, I kind of know when I'm, I'm at the point where it's like, okay, I think this is done, you know, maybe tweak here, tweak there, that's it. And it's just, I just kind of feel it out. And, and then when I feel like, okay, this is awesome. Like, and like, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to music. Like for me, it's like, uh, I, I get I take it to a point and then if I start getting like frustrated or or just like tired it's like okay this is done yeah that that's the key is like walking away from it I just walked away from it a lot this year yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um I know uh, like yeah you're you're probably similar to me because your stuff doesn't come out that often um uh but like it's really good I the first time I saw you play was in 2020 um but yeah, like, I is that how what you look for in a song, or you're just more of a prof I'll just say this first, and then, like, you're more of a professionalist, or... Perfectionist. Yeah. Perfectionist? Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> a professionalist. <laughs> that is not me. <laughs> I used to be, but, um, like I said, I have uh, tried to come up with a much healthier and consistent process for completing material and finishing songs, and... To me, I can tell when uh, a song, a track, a sprint, or a piece of work is approximately 80% done. When it's getting done, uh, I can definitely feel it much easier than when I think it's done, done. So last 10 or so percent uh, is always the hardest to decide. But some of the telltale signs that the work is almost done is that adding more elements is starting to feel unnecessary, is starting to feel like it's not really contributing anything to a bigger structure, but rather 
starting to muddy things up or make things more complicated for subsequent mixing and such. So uh, for me, uh, it's also about stamping out my perfectionism and saying, okay, well, this is done now. Couple more listens, maybe a couple more things, maybe some time off from it. And if during the time off, I won't have some kind of a sudden idea that I think will make it better, if something is not coming uh, to me naturally, then perhaps it's time to uh, wrap up a particular project, piece, song, track, sprint, whatever the case may be. I keep hearing this quote, I don't know who it's quoted to or if it's even a quote, it's more of a concept. The creative project is always abandoned at a right time rather than finished. I think that was Trent Reznor that said that. Either Trent Reznor or somebody from that era, like Charlie Clauser or somebody who, yeah, who they worked with. So to me, uh, that's a, a general guiding principle that I abide by. And if I feel like the effort I'm putting in is not adding to the song, but rather clogging it, muddying it up, uh, making it more bland, because if you have five or six lead lines, they're starting to clash and starting to sound. You're going to try to turn them all down during mixing, so nothing's going to really leave an impact, mm -hmm. to give you more specific examples. Uh, those are the telltale signs to me that uh, we now are in the final sprint of completing whatever the current thing may be. So. To me, it's about finding the right balance. I'm starting to hear what I wanted to say in this, sort of, sort of, never fully, because that's how artists are. You'll, you'll never be satisfied, you'll never be 100% satisfied with what you do. I think it's mm -hmm. just life. But when you're feeling like the structure is mostly there and it doesn't feel necessary to add more elements to it, then it's time to uh, bring to start bringing that particular structure or the project to the finish line. All right, I'm very satisfied with all these questions. <laughs> um, all I'm gonna ask is your socials and all that stuff. I'm gonna first start off by me. I am John. I run Demonics Kids, which is actually a thing that I've used to connect people in Alberta because I feel like there's artists that get underrepresented in Alberta that a lot of people should just pay attention to. Um, so I started this whole thing called Dead Modest Kids, which is child innocence, which or humble child is what keeps the creativity going. So that's kind of the goal of it. The modest kid, humble child. Um, yeah, you can look at my thing, which is Dead Modest Kids, link tree, Dead Modest Kids. Uh, and I also am an artist as well. Uh, John, I DJ, and I think I'm gonna change that to John A, mm -hmm. just because of uh, just because of Twitch, <laughs> and um, I've gotten a lot of like recognition from Twitch. So John A is my DJ alias, and my producer alias is John J H N N. Um, I make now I make more dark wavy stuff. Before that, it was house, but kind of going on to more dark wavy stuff and I'm going to stick to it. Uh, but yes, and my EP or my album is coming out or yeah, my EP is coming out fully in September but the first song is coming out July 7th which is my birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so come to the show November 16th and uh, I'll let these guys do their promos. Alright, so you can find Twitch's music. You can listen to and download it at twitch-official.bandcamp.com. Uh, we are also on Facebook. I don't know what the Facebook handle is, to be honest with you. It's like Twitch the Original. Uh, we I also run a self-releasing record label called Tripping on a Cable Records. You can find that on Facebook as well. And obviously you have a YouTube channel that's Twitch. And what else? Yeah, just released the new album, Fuck Your Pop. Take a listen. We're on most, if not all, major streaming apps. And yes, do come to the show. It's going to be awesome. Triple Threat, release party, EPs, album, fuck yeah. Anyway, Slava. Thank you, thank you. You can uh, search Nebula, that is uh, spelled as Nebula, but with E in the end. So Nebulae, as in multiple nebulae. 
uh, Nebulae Complex on, if you search that on Facebook, my page is likely the first one to pop up. Feel free to follow and check the latest news and updates from the project there. Um, also, do the same for Bandcamp. Even if you Google Nebulae, as in multiple Nebulae, Nebulae Complex, comma Bandcamp on Google, uh, my Bandcamp is going to be the first one to pop up. And lastly, for the most centralized place of all the streaming, Bandcamp, and other social links I have, it's just Linktree. Uh, it's going to be Linktree and then uh, the slash thingy, nebulae.complex. That is Linktree, the, the slash thingy, and then nebulae, and then nebulae as in multiple nebulae.complex on Linktree. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, John. I just also want to mention that I've run a group on Facebook called the Calgary Industrial Music Network. It's kind of a group to kind of connect DJs, uh, maybe not so much venues, but just connect people in the scene. There's also the, I don't run this group, but there's the Calgary Goth Community Group. Uh, I think if you're interested in this kind of music, uh, definitely hit both of those pages up on Facebook, the Calgary Industrial Music Network, as well as the Calgary Gothic Community and Resources Bay. Uh, it's it's a isn't it? Uh, it's it's like volunteer driven. Johnny does some of that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Johnny. I think uh, this guy Anthony is a admin on there and stuff like that. Too, I do so. additional admin duties mostly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Housekeeping type stuff. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, John. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, I quickly want you to promote something because you reached out to me a while ago about this. Can you promote you're looking for DJs and stuff? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just looking for DJs uh just to pass the album to that potentially would like to play the album whatever. I'm sure Slava want is looking for the same kind of thing. I'm sure I mean, you obviously are as well, so I think for all of us, you know, if you're a DJ, if you're, you know, if you're some, you know, you you run a radio show whatever, like hit us up in our socials message us email us whatever uh or we can find you uh, either way we'd like to s share our music with you to potentially have it played on a radio show or whatever so yeah that's it <laughs> thank you for the endless content i'm going to spend some time editing this but actually i need to go to broken city or sorry modern love to get my equipment <laughs> <laughs> i'm missing my controller right here um, but thank you, everybody. Hopefully, we'll see you at the show. This should be up before the show, for sure. I'm literally not going to sleep for the next three days. <laughs> John, and thank you very much All right. for doing yeah. this and putting this together. Yeah, much, much no problem. I appreciate it. Basically, if you guys didn't hear, they said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, and cheers. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. All right. Have a good night or day or whatever it is. <laughs>